Welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Box Seat. I'm Adam McGrath and joined by Mark Holmes. Mark, the Tab Touch Master Series is gone, but we're back at Ascot for the midweek racing and looking forward to going through this eight race card. Yes, another Wednesday back at Ascot. Welcome to our viewers. Great to be back for these midweek meetings and competitive fields, Adam. Let's take a look at the conditions that we are going to be faced with. The Moogle Rail is out 15 metres with a cutaway in the straight and some perfect weather for racing as well. So looking forward to getting through this card and hopefully finding you plenty of winners. Let's start with race number one, the PerthRacing.com.au maiden, an event over the 1,500 metres for the three-year-olds, Mark. Yes, and there's a key form race here from Northern. It was a three-year-old maiden, one by Dragon Commander, but a few runners in this race come out of that one. We'll have a look, though, at Sense of Power running second. Immediately off the bit, Sunset Pete starting to push up towards the fence. They're followed further back on the outside. Here's a pro, but coming to the 300, Dragon Commander with plenty to offer. Show on the Persuader at the two now, and it led by two lengths. Battling away is Sense of Power, but Dragon Commander's increased its lead. It's coming away from them. This has been a dominant performance, and it'll pull right away Dragon Commander and trot in by four lengths. Second home is Sense of... It's good performance there by Sense of Power. She was able to just work out a little bit closer on the speed and sit outside the leader through those earlier stages and then just no match for Dragon Commander which was a very good winner, uh, winning by four lengths on that occasion. Barrier one, William Pike on board, I think the extra distance is going to suit and she looks to get a perfect run through those early stages and with the cutaway should have no dramas. Yeah, especially from barrier one it looks ideal doesn't it? The other one to come out of that race that made up good ground, none too savvy, this filly by Savabill. The only reason I didn't have it ahead of Sense of Power is it came from last and it did run on quite nicely but Sense of Power did all the work in the running and was still there in the finish but she's still a very good chance. I really liked the performance. I thought it was uh, the best of the race was held up out the back a couple of times and Jerry Noski had to restart this three year old filly probably two or three times down the straight and she responded each time as well. The first up run over the 1400 metres was very good, drawn wide again but she'll be able to work into this. Another one there, Armora, comes out of a different form race, out of a Bunbury maiden, which was won by At The Ready. Now, that was a nice performance. At The Ready came from the inside from well back and hit the line strongly. Armora was good too, was also held up and did a few things wrong, so can improve. Yeah, we've seen some okay gallopers come from this form line and even the race before with Master Magician as well. As you said, was held up, laid out down the straight, drawn nicely in barrier eight. I think the extra 100 metres will suit as well, but I'm going to go with the each way prospect here, number nine, none too savvy. From number two, Clever Dick, eight, Sense of power and four pickup line. Eight on top for me, the replay horse, Sense of Power, ahead of number nine, none too savvy. The 13 there, the escape plan, and number one, Burger Time. Race number two at Ascot, it is over the 1,400 metres, a class five handicap. And looking forward to this race, Mark, because there are probably two or three that really stand out that do have some proven Saturday form lines. Yes, next contestant is one of those, Adam. You, we go back three starts now to a Saturday graduation 62 plus race. Let's have a look at it. Running second behind Candlelight Star. By Pirates Fortune in the straight though. War in Paris ranged up to Potent Secret. Pike comes between them with brackets though. Candlelight Star, the Greys coming through along the fence. Speeding Comets weaving its way through. War in Paris, Candlelight Star's got there. It's Candlelight Star drawing clear. And Candlelight Star won the last from a three. Just do not know what to do with this gallop. It was a really good performance on that occasion, but since then has been well and truly beaten. Nine lengths by Step Right Up and six by Yoshi Noxious. Now I know they are genuine Saturday form lines compared to some of these horses but at the end of the day has had 15 runs at Ascot has never won it's now been 555 days the short backup and the blinkers going on may help but it's just hard to be very confident about a galloper like this and number two in this life drops in class significantly from the jungle mist into this moderate class five race from the Lindsay Smith yard uh, I certainly give it a chance in a race such as this. Huge drop, isn't it? A listed race. And look at the two previous runs before that listed as well. Only beaten two and a half lengths by Ros Martini over 2,100 metres. Beaten by Juicing Carrots by a half length over 1,600 as well. With 55 and a half kilos, she is perfectly weighed and she looks very hard to beat, especially with that second up record having three attempts for two victories in the third. A couple more we'll quickly have a look at, Adam. First of them, Paris Dream. The Bar Shoes come off now in the care of Jimmy Taylor. Former Cerise and White Galloper. First up, should run well. I've got a big opinion of this Galloper. I was really surprised when Bob actually got rid of her. I thought she'd shown enough through those occasions and just needed a little bit of luck. The trial was beaten three lengths, not asked to do a lot. Barrier one here, I think she can certainly run a race. And quickly, Anna So. This horse has untapped ability. It showed that last preparation. Didn't have luck in the special conditions race, of course, the heat for the uh, regional championship, but can put it all together here over 1,400 metres. Always puts in a nice performance, but as you said, just struggles to do the complete performance 
performance, which is what this uh, horse is looking for. Form lines around Alora May, Hey, listen, and Juice and Carrots from last prep are certainly good enough. Barrier six here with Peter Nucky taking the ride. Just needs a little bit of luck, and he'll be attacking the line strongly. But I'm going to go with number four, Paris Dream, for the new stable. From number two in this life, three NSO and seven Light Up a Sky. Three NSO on top for me from the four Paris Dream, two in this life, and one next contestant. Race number three at Ascot, it's over the 1,000 metres and mark when we take a look at this form, there is speed left, right and centre. Yeah, it's a very good race is this. We'll have a look at the one at the top there though, Gold Shimmer, winning on the 7th of September at Belmont. Here comes Delicate Miss though, letting loose and Gold Shimmer going up on the cutaway and Greco winding up down the middle and also threading its way through then came Ishmael. Really good performance here by Gold Shimmer, has now won three of the past four and you take a look at the form lines around, remember Berlin and Delicate Miss which of course won on Saturday at Ascot and they are certainly holding up with the one and a half kilo claim gets in nicely with 56 and a half and as I said when everything else wants to lead other than it and Ishmael, it should get a lovely run throughout and I think it's just going to be too strong late. And then we have Sterling Estate which returns as well. It uh, was withdrawn at the barriers last time out at Mount Barker on the 13th of November. Had to trial after that. Couldn't uh, be loaded on that occasion. Absolute barrier rogue this horse. They have so many issues behind the gates. Once they get in, it certainly is a nice run. I look at the form lines where it beat Corvara by a length. A nice run behind 12 rounds last campaign as well. And it certainly has capabilities. Barrier 5, 54.5 kilos. If they get in and running, it's certainly a leading chance. Yes, the big boys in there as well. Mr. African, the front bar plates come off. And uh, he cast his near four plate in the run at Belmont when he won on the 18th of May. So he's trialled since then and he looks to have come back quite well. Has won first up before as well. Another one that would just continue to run out in front and make sure there's some nice tempo in this race. Was scratched for this assignment. So I think it can certainly play a part. But I'm going to go with number one, Gold Shimmer. One three of his past four. Should be able to run on strongly. Number six, Ishmael. I have not had it in my numbers all prep. I think it runs a race here with the speed, number five, Tranquilla Sunrise, and eight, Sterling Estate, one, six, five, eight. I've got the one on top as well, Gold Shimmer ahead of the eight, Sterling Estate, three, Mr. African, and four, Rosinski. Race number four at Ascot, it is a class three handicap over the 1100 metres mark. There's some proven form lines here with the likes of a key to fame and prime witness, but a couple that are certainly on the up and just done a string in some nice performances. Yeah, it looks to be a Quinella race for mine. The two you mentioned at the top, key to fame and prime witness, but we'll have a look at the latter of those two. Running fourth last start in a graduation 62 plus. Great secret assault, Pirates Fortune still going stride for stride. A little over length, Tommy Who. No run down on the inside. You watching me who got stopped in his tracks, Roger the Roman getting clear. His Ruby can run down the outskirts of the track. Tommy who had hit the front and now Roger the Roman. Roger the Dodger bursting through in the centre. Grab the lead from Ruby can run and Roger... Nice performance there by Prime Witness beaten by Roger the Roman which of course we saw uh, put in a, a nice or reasonable performance on the weekend against some handy types as well so we know those form lines are proven. Second up record is very good. Two attempts for a victory in a second. Drawn nicely in barrier three. This is one of the weakest races that Prime Witness has faced. I like the two and a half week break between runs as well. It's also got that fitness of the first up run and it gets the weight swing on Keita Fame which makes me lean towards her but Keita Fame he's obviously class he was a bit fractious in the barriers last time out in the Belmont Guineas but before that put the riding on the wall as a very very good galloper 1100 metres might be a bit too short for him as well that's my biggest question mark here I think Keita Fame has probably the most upside here and is going to win the most races but the 1100 metres may be too short has won over 1200 before and the 1400 metres but that's where this horse is going to do its best work that 1400 metres where it can just roll out in front and make sure it's got that genuine tempo throughout so maybe fresh he can run a race here. I do have it on top, but that is my concern, as you mentioned. So key to fame from Prime Witness, four Song of War and five Valadiri Valadara. Yeah, it looks uh, to be the Quinella of the day, really. Number seven, Prime Witness on top for me. Ahead of two, key to fame. Number six, Formula One and four Song of War.